This new home battery uses a cell technology that is considered absolutely safe. But what does the Fronius backup system really offer? How is it possible that you and your loved ones are protected during a power outage? And how does Fronius handle your data? These and many other questions from my community are what I took with me to Martin from Fronius. Let's take a look at what the Fronius system offers. It's great to meet you. We're standing here right in front of your latest innovation, the state-of-the-art storage Hi. solution. Exactly. This is the new Fronius Reserva, a stackable battery built with LFP technology. And I have the option to choose between two and five battery modules, providing a capacity range from 6.3 up to 15.8 kilowatt hours. And now, for the first time, we truly have a 100% complete solution under our own brand. This means the battery is integrated even more deeply into our overall system. This means you now have the solution in your own hands to maximize the use of your own solar power, achieving greater self-sufficiency and independence from the grid. I'll ask more in a moment, just briefly about Janet. the battery again. Let's say I want to begin with a small battery. Can I expand it after two or three years without encountering any major issues? That's how it is. It's not about individual products. It's not about the battery or the inverter. It's about the overall system. I can begin with a smaller battery, take a closer look at it and give it a full year to see see how it performs and if i then realize that i want or need more capacity or if something shifts suddenly an electric car comes into the picture the kids grow older or other needs arise yeah, yeah. generally energy use tends to rise we see that and i can easily expand then we strongly recommend carrying this out within the first two years the reason is that one battery module delivers 3.15 kilowatt hours and if the other modules have already degraded slightly then the new module is also always a bit well it doesn't deliver the full capacity and that's why it makes sense to do it earlier on really an important topic i think is always the charge and discharge speed what c rate do you provide in that regard it was extremely important for us to achieve robust charging and discharging performance as you've already mentioned before that's a very important topic when i plug in the electric car or when larger energy consumers like the heat pump are running many people don't realize that then even though the battery might be full, if it can't handle that much power, I'll still end up having to buy electricity from the grid. Then, for instance, with the 12 kilowatt inverter paired with the largest 15.8 kilowatt hour battery, we're hitting 11.3 kilowatts for both charging and discharging, so already quite high. Yes, it's naturally also particularly interesting for using dynamic electricity tariffs. So if I want to integrate dynamic electricity tariffs that I can quickly charge i'll ask you a bit more about energy management right away as well returning to the battery you've got a display here what exactly do you notice as the customer there the far left is a status led which should typically remain green and along with the other four leds this is just in demo mode right now but under normal circumstances it displays the charge level ranging from I'm, zero I'm to 55 percent that's right and depending on the blinking pattern i can also see whether it's charging or discharging of course in the app i always have the complete overview at my fingertips but many people prefer to manage it offline and it's really convenient if, for instance, the battery is in the garage, the customer arrives later and can instantly check the status. All good, the battery is fully charged. I stayed independent again today, no issues. Okay, great. What about safety? You already mentioned you have lithium iron phosphate, which is fundamentally a safe cell technology. From which supplier do you get your cells? Can you say? Yes, we're mentioning the provider, the supplier, not proactively. But behind it stands one of the world's largest battery producers. And naturally, as a quality leader and an Austrian company, it has consistently been positioned at the very top of the industry. That it is a highly secure cell technology, which has also been thoroughly tested. And currently, there's really no alternative to LFP. So as a customer, you truly don't need to worry at all about safety concerns or even about its extended long-term lifespan. What about other safety features such as pressure relief valves and similar components? How do they function? Yes, there are pressure relief valves installed on the left side, but fundamentally the cell technology and the cell chemistry itself are inherently safe enough that we don't need to incorporate a wide range of additional safety mechanisms or features. It's really not a necessity. Martin, we've covered storage in detail and it's new. It's really great that you now have a solution for homeowners, but you also offer significantly more for those considering a photovoltaic system. So how do we get the direct current from the solar panels into your storage unit here? Yes, for that you need inverters, a hybrid capable inverter. The reserve is compatible with the Gen 24 series. Those are our inverters designed for residential use. They range from 3 to 12 kilowatts in capacity and brand new this year, we are proudly showcasing the Verto Plus here at this exciting event. It's designed for larger systems, so for bigger residential setups or even agriculture, small businesses, 
It ranges from 15 to 33.3 kilowatts. It has three MPP trackers, so even if the roof, if there are different orientations, it's not a problem at all. And you can connect the battery, or if necessary, you can cascade up to four towers together, allowing you to achieve up to 63 kilowatt hours in total capacity. All right, just a single inverter then? Or with one inverter then? In the inverters with up to 12 kilowatts of power, how many MPP trackers are included there? They have two MPP trackers, also have integrated shadow management. I had your inverter once and was also very satisfied with the shading management. But do you have the capability to integrate optimizers, for instance, in your system? Yes, there are indeed various options available to us, but we don't actively promote it because based on our experience, it's simply not necessary in around 90% of cases when it comes to reallocation management, which we have. And then for cases that really experience significant shading, well, you kind of have to question whether you might need to consider an entirely different solution for the PV system anyway. How am I as an end customer covered with you in case of a power outage? A really cool feature of our inverters is that with the PV point, there's PV point basic and PV point pro, I can still use power even without a battery as long as it's daytime and the sun is shining brightly enough. So when the sun is shining brightly, I can even power devices like an outlet, a fridge or a freezer without needing a battery. So that's the most cost effective solution, the entry level option. Of course, if I want a real full backup solution, a proper emergency power solution, then I'll definitely need a storage unit and we've also recently introduced this backup switch and the backup controller into our product range as well. The backup switch is for manual switching. There are simply many customers who say I want to intervene myself. Manual switching, simple solution, or the other option is with the controller, which will then automatically switch over in emergency power mode. What's the switching time you have there? That's approximately 20 seconds. It's not a seamless transition, so there's a brief interruption. Many in the market claim they can do it, but there's often confusion. But if you approach it the right way, it's definitely not straightforward. You could easily end up damaging electrical loads if the process isn't precisely balanced and perfectly synchronized, which requires real expertise. That's something we're still a bit concerned about at the moment. Great. We've gone over the technical components extensively now. Many people are also wondering, how can I integrate my electric car into this system? I've heard something about Section 14A, smart charging, a whole lot of topics still, energy management. What solutions do you provide specifically for energy management? For us, the energy management fundamentally has its primary authority and control located within the inverter system. It's connected to our online portal. We have some really cool features there, including the relatively new energy cost assistant, which is precisely designed for these Section 14 atopics or dynamic electricity tariffs which are currently on everyone's lips. It's an AI-based tool. It knows, for instance, if I have an electricity tariff, be it a fixed one, day-night differentiated, or even a dynamic one, it adapts accordingly, that changes hourly. So it has this information which it pulls from the system or from the internet, such as wholesale electricity prices. Then it learns the consumption behavior of the end customer using AI. It knows the status of the battery, how full or how empty it is. And with the weather data, it also has a forecast. So this tool can independently optimize and manage the battery. It can hold back energy because it might become cheaper later on or even more efficient and practical. But it can also say charge the car now because the sun is shining and it will be cloudy in the afternoon. That's already a really cool functionality because it operates entirely on its own, effortlessly saving the customer a small amount of money each and every single day. In addition to the regular savings they're already achieving without any extra effort. The energy management also plays an important role in surplus charging. Your Watt Pilot was already acknowledged last year as an exceptional rollbox. New Watt Pilot now or? That's right. Last year, our Watt Pilot was tested by the ADAC alongside a whole bunch of other similar models. We were absolutely thrilled to win the test as we were both the most affordable and the best solution available. And there are various reasons for that. Primarily, what was decisive was the PV optimized charging. We were simply able to implement it best, ensuring that the surplus from my solar system goes into the electric car with relative watt precision. And we were truly thrilled about this recognition. Now with the new Watt Pilot Flex, we've taken it even further, having completely revamped the design. It features a cool LED ring where I, as the end customer, can clearly see where the energy has come from. And just a few upgrades as well, such as a fixed cable. It gives me more flexibility during installation. Now I've got LAN2. Before it was just Wi-Fi, so definitely some IM. Yes, what services do you offer there? There's 11 kilowatts, 22 kilowatts exactly. And there's the home version and the pro version. 
The Pro version also has metering and calibration certification, so it's MED certified. That's always a topic in Germany for billing and especially for business customers. It's actually crucial to get it right. Mandatory. And what about dynamic electricity tariffs, particularly for electromobility? Can I fully integrate the electric car with AI and let it automatically determine the best and most cost effective charging time for my vehicle? We can already do that. And that's essentially what the energy cost assistant is already doing now. We still have a lot of features, essentially a whole list of functions that will be added in the coming weeks and months ahead. So somehow it's still the beginning now. An extremely exciting topic, but of course also very complex. Yes, because if I maybe have a heating solution, an additional heater or heat pump electric car, it really does get quite complicated with prioritizations and all that. But there's still a lot more to come. We can already start making those prioritizations now. And it's honestly really exciting and fun to be involved in the whole process. How do you integrate a heat pump, for example, as you mentioned? How is that done? We have now also introduced the HomePilot Eco, which joins the original HomePilot that has been in our lineup for quite some time. This is our solution for heating, focusing primarily on hot water preparation and efficiency. It can continuously vary the heating power from 0 to 9 kilowatts, and thus I can... In addition to the battery storage or the storage that I have in my electric car, I can also, in the form of hot water, I can simply store my surplus energy. The new version is more streamlined, a bit cheaper, and doesn't regulate as precisely or in as much detail, but it still functions effectively. But it's now specifically optimized for heat pumps. This means we can directly control certain models and also receive detailed data back from them and can then visualize more data in our online portal, such as the flow temperature and so on. Okay, using SG Ready or eBus, which interface is it? There are different variations. We've also integrated more deeply with some manufacturers, Oxner, Bosch and a few others. Well, that varies. SG Ready is no issue at all, but there's still quite a lot in active development and evolving right now, as you're already well aware of. A very, very important topic for our viewers remains ensuring security, particularly when it comes to warranty coverage. How much warranty, how many cycles do you offer, and what happens in case of a warranty claim? Let's start with how many years of warranty you offer. Yes, so with the reserver, we provide a 10-year warranty period. We guarantee 80% remaining capacity after 10 years or a specific amount of energy throughput over time. What's unique about us is that it's a full 10-year warranty period. Okay, so I didn't notice that at all. It's not just the material warranty, but it also covers shipping expenses and even includes an additional service component. Compensation is provided as a flat rate to cover all of the installer's working hours. So in the end, the customer essentially has no cost if something happens? Exactly, that's how it is. So it always depends on the case, but generally the customer should have a pretty comprehensive package for 10 years.